So in this episode, we've come to the downtown Riverwalk portion of Savannah, just off of Riverfront Street. And we're taking a look at some very neat historical markers concerned with the colonial history of Savannah. So let's take a look at some of these markers and some of these cool historic sites. All right, so I do not want to spend too much time in this place I am now, but this place is crucial when we're talking about the American Revolution events of October of 1779 and the Siege of Savannah. This is one of the most important places here during that siege. This is the old Jewish burial grounds. We are just a few hundred yards from the Spring Hill Redoubt, and this is pretty much the rallying point of the French and colonial armies during that time. This is pretty much one of the oldest places here in Savannah. Unfortunately, we can't go in here, and if we walk right around here, well, you can see today it's uh, been defaced a little bit, but I wish we could go in here. I, I have looked all over trying to find a way in, but we can't. This is a Jewish cemetery. I don't know why it's locked. I guess to help protect it and preserve it. Uh, this is not being used now. But this was established in August of 1773. So let's take a look at the only thing there is to see here besides the original wall, the um, historic marker. And let's get out of here because this is a very sketchy area. So this was the rallying point. If the forces could take Spring Hill he'll read out or if they could it this was either going to be the first or second rallying point this cemetery was was established by uh, Mordecai Sheftal on August the 2nd 1773 from lands granted to him in 1762 by King George the third as a parcel of land that shall be and forever remain to and for the use of the purpose of a uh, place of burial for all persons whatever process, uh, professing the Jewish religion during an ill-fated attempt of the French forces under Admiral Charles Henry and de Estang, the American forces up under General Benjamin Lincoln to recapture Savannah from the British, General Lincoln's orders on October 8, 1779 stated that the second place of rally, or the first, if the readout should not be carried, would be at the Jews' burying ground where the reserve would be placed. The reserve was here. According to the account of Captain Antoine uh, Frank Cossis, Terrence O'Connor, hopefully I got that right, a military engineer serving with the French forces on October the 9th, 1779, during the battle, shortly after 4 a.m., the Reserve Corps, commanded by M. L. E. Vicami de Norales, advanced as far as an old Jewish cemetery. I'll probably butcher that name. Here they placed on this right and a little to the rear four four pounders. You can see the smokestack that is at the Georgia State Railroad Museum, that's kind of marking the Spring Hill Readout spot. Of course, today there's buildings and not filled in swamps. But as the British got here, they saw them, they fell back to Spring Hill Readout. And the French and American forces, of course, kept going and retreating out of here. And they held it long enough just to get the men out. But uh, pretty cool to see this place in person. It is in a sketchy area, as you can see behind me. And it is raining. So it is raining, so hopefully uh, the camera lens is picking me up. But pretty cool to see this place. Let's get out of here before we get mugged. And if you're ever in Savannah, come check it out really quick. Unfortunately, uh, you can't go in, which sucks. But uh, I wish we could. It really does stink. I, I wanted to go in here so bad. But uh, yeah, unfortunately you can't. Let's get out of here before we get mugged. And we'll see you in the next location here in this episode. Okay, so we are in the riverfront area of Savannah here, and we're taking a look at some of the historic plaques and different markers and spots 
commemorating some of the history of Savannah, mostly the American Revolution and colonial history here. So let's, uh, let's take a look at some of these. But this is a marker concerned with Jane uh, Culler. Now, she was born Jean de La Touche, and she came to Savannah with her husband Tellman in 1768. After his death in 72, Culler took in lodgers first at her home on the corner of Bull and Broughton Streets, then at an undetermined location on Bay Street. It was at her home on Bay Street that she hosted the meetings of Savannah's son, uh, Savannah's Liberty Boys, and among them her son, Henry Culler. After the capture of Savannah by the British, Jane Culler's role in supporting the efforts of the revolutionaries resulted in an arrest warrant that was issued by Governor Wright, the governor of Georgia at the time for the Crown. And he issued that in 1781. By that time, she had followed the advice of her friends and fled Savannah. It's a pretty cool little story about one of the residents here in Savannah. And uh, hopefully you can hear me because they're cutting grass and wow, it's, it's loud. And then I got the street here. But uh, this is downtown Savannah. The river is just there on the riverfront street. And this is the historic part of Savannah that you want to visit if you come to Savannah. There's a lot of cool restaurants down here, but a lot of cool history as well. All right, so we're going to make our way to the next marker site. And there's something really cool I want to show you coming up um, in just a, just a couple of steps for me and just a minute for you guys. That was a gift from George Washington to the city of Savannah. So we're gonna take a look at that and a couple of more markers commemorating the colonial history and American Revolutionary War history here in Savannah. Okay, so there's some pretty cool artillery pieces here that were gifts to the city of Savannah by none other than George Washington himself. So let's take a look at some of the most historic artifacts here in Savannah, which is right behind me. So here in Savannah you had something called the Chapman Artillery and these bronze cannon were presented to the Chapman Artillery by President Washington after his visit to Savannah in 1791 and they are of English and French make probably commemorating the French and English here during the Battle of Savannah this cannon however has an inscription on a British six pound cannon that states it was surrendered by the capitulation of Yorktown, October 19, 1781. This was cast in 1758 during the reign of King George II, and it has a royal insignia and motto of the Order of the Gardener on its barrel. So here's probably a closer look at the inscriptions on the guns here. This is the British gun from Yorktown and is on the 1848 carriage. So the gun does not match the carriage. The carriages are later, but this gun was presented by Washington in 1791 to the city of Savannah. And this cannon apparently is used by the British at Yorktown. The French gun was manufactured in Strasbourg, 1756, and it is engraved with the coat of arms for King Louis uh, which the sun was the emblem of that monarch. And it has a Latin description that says, Last Argument of the Kings. It also has dolphins on it that were a reminder of the French as well. So this gun is a little harder to read. Maybe you can see it on camera, but this is the French gun. And you can see the inscriptions for King Louis on the top here. Pretty cool to see this. So this is one of the main markers I wanted to see. This is to the Georgia Hussars. They were organized 13th February, 1736. And they were a group of mounted rangers who was raised by General Oglethorpe to patrol and protect the colony of Georgia from the Spaniards and Indians. And they fought at the Bloody Marsh in 1742 and at the siege of Savannah during the battle here during the American Revolution in 1779. It's record during the war um, in the Civil War, which was 1861 to 65, is surpassed as it was its service in Mexico, World War I, World War II, and Korea. It remained a horse cavalry until October of 1940. From, Colonel from colonial times to Vietnam, 
they have been represented in all wars and is still a unit today in a National Guard. And here's a cannon that is kind of commemorating those guys. So very cool unit that's fought from before the American Revolution, basically before our country even existed to now. Wow. So this is pretty cool. This is the Salisburger Monument of Reconciliation. And the Georgia Salisburger Society give this monument to the city of Savannah in 94. And it was by the state of Salzburg, Austria, in memory of the Lutheran Protestants of Salzburg who were denied religious freedom and expelled from the homeland. And the first 37 Salzburgers come here to Georgia and landed on this site um, the 12th of March, 1734. And they were welcomed by Oglethorpe, um, James Edgar Oglethorpe, founder of the Georgia colony, and given temporary shelter before moving in their new home in Ebenezer. So, pretty cool monument to some German colonists who settled here. So here's a pretty cool relic of Savannah's past. This is the old exchange bill, and it bears the date Savannah Exchange 1802, but it hung from 1804 until a short time here in the recent years before the new city hall was built. And this bell was used to mark the closing times for the shops, and it was rung by a watchman when a fire broke out. It also rang when the American uh, victories were declared during the War of 1812. And it also rang to welcome distinguished guests to Savannah. Pretty cool. So one of the more notable men here in Savannah during the American Revolutionary War was Dr. Noble Wimbledon Jones. He was a uh, physician and resident of Savannah. Uh, he was an American Revolutionary War veteran, Patriot Georgia delegate to the Continental Congress and the first president of the Georgia Medical Society in 1804. And he was the morning star of the revolution. So the Georgia Medical Society of Savannah is the oldest local medical society in the United States. And this was a statue erected of him in 2004 during the bicentennial celebration. Pretty cool. So next market we're going to look at here, or item, Reminds me of what the British did here during the American Revolution as the French were coming in here on the Savannah River that you see behind us. The British sank some ships that weren't really useful anymore to make it shallower so that larger warships could pass over the river. And that was one of the things they did to help get the French out. But this don't really have anything to do with that but in the way it does. Let's check this out. So the beacon light behind us was erected in 1858 by the federal government and it served to aid to the navigation in the Savannah River. It was stands 77 foot above the river level and is illuminated by gas. And over the hulls of the ships that the British scuttled in 1779 during the siege of Savannah, that year by the French and Americans, the warship uh, Troot, if I'm saying it right, commanded by the Count de Chestnut, um, shelled this area of Savannah from her anchorage in the back river opposite this point. So this is kind of commemorating that spot and also served as an aid in navigation. And the warships were on the opposite banks of the river right where we're standing, shelling in this direction the city of Savannah. So as we talk about the bombardment of the city of Savannah in 1779, well, this is the area it was bombarding. And then you've got several anchors here. I'm not really for sure what the anchors are from, but uh, still a very cool place here in Savannah to check out. All right, so that's a little bit about the markers here. I'm no expert when it comes to the American Revolution in general and the Battle of Savannah. I've just done some research and read up on things. Go check out Project Past. You may notice I'm wearing one of his shirts, getting it all sweaty. Awesome channel here on YouTube. Consider becoming one of his Patreon members as well. I am, and I can guarantee you it's worth every penny that you give, uh, and it helps him out. So go do that. Well, we're going to head to the next spot, and we'll see you from there.